As life in the college town of Gainesville rolls on, investigators spent two years building their murder case against Pedro Bravo. Erica burying her grief in her studies. She was majoring in biology at Santa Fe Community College. During all this time, I felt like Christian was kind of near us, kind of watching over us. And I felt like he was there with us, trying to trying to comfort us, trying to give us, you know, you know, it's gonna be okay. All rise for the jury. Let the record reflect that Mr. Bravo is present in the courtroom with his counsel. Be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. But when the trial finally begins, the defendant is very much on the defense. Charged with premeditated murder, kidnapping, and poisoning. His high school friend, you have student Christian Aguilar in the trial of Santa Fe student Pedro Bravo. Pedro Bravo and Christian Aguilar were high school amigos. But all that ended when Christian swept Pedro's former girlfriend, Erica Freeman, off her feet. It was a very passionate person, very romantic. I love that about him. I love everything about him. I used to tell him, I was like, you know, the world's can end right now, and if I'm in your arms, I don't care. Now, Pedro stands accused of murdering Christian, and it looks like there's a mountain of evidence to prove it. With all of this evidence amassed against him, he's got a very narrow opportunity to tell a story that's even remotely plausible. From the outset, the prosecution pulls no punches. Body in the wooded area painting Bravo as a jealous rival plotting revenge against his former friend. This is a story as old as time, a classic story, the Cain and Abel story, the elimination of a rival fueled by jealousy, hatred, anger. He has an obsession with her. He has an obsession with getting her back. Erica takes center stage as the prosecution asks her to recount her story. And I did not want to continue doing a long distance relationship. And now I have to have this person, this, this monster, you know, staring at me while I'm on the stand. And I can just feel myself like aching. And I just don't even want to look that way. I don't want him to look at me. I don't want him to see me ever again. The prosecution presents Pedro's journals as proof of his disturbed state of mind. Page after page of teen angst and anguished obsession. With everyone out there wanting blood, wanting me gone, I will give them what they want. There was also this self-loathing suicide note he penned in jail. I feel terrible and every day in here is the day spent waiting to die. I'm a monster for having hurt Chris the way I did. At one point, she breaks down in tears. All of this was focused on you. You were at the center of this all. Yes, a lot of it was with his obsession for me and how he wanted me back and how he wanted to be with me. What did you think reading his journal? It sounds like the mind of a sociopath or a sick person. For someone to be that selfish and that controlling, that manipulative, you know, it's almost like what they describe sociopaths, you know, they will kill your dog and then go help you find it. Prosecutors also start piling up the circumstantial evidence compiled over the two-year investigation. The jury learns that just four days before Christian's disappearance, Pedro came here to a nearby Walmart and buys an ankle wrap and gets $80 cash back. He then comes to this Lowe's where he buys hot shot pesticide, a Gatorade, and a shovel. Then, for some reason, he heads back to that Walmart. And Pedro walks in with that shovel. He purchases sleeping aids, duct tape, and a knife. He pays cash. Then there's that staple of 21st century criminology, the computer evidence. Turns out that Pedro Googled suspicious search terms such as buying anesthetics. What is chloroform and how do sleeping pills kill you? At 1.35, he does a search, good anesthetic chemical. At 1.35, he does another search. Can rubbing alcohol knock someone out? The prosecution claims that days after Pedro completed his homicidal research, he arranged to meet Christian. Reporter Stephanie Bashar of ABC affiliate WCJB has been covering the story from day one. The state put together a timeline, a sequence of events where, you know, where he was from when he got together with Chris all the way to nighttime. Christian holding that Kanye West CD and Pedro right next to him. That is a picture that, you know, no one will ever forget. The two sat parked in Pedro's SUV at that Walmart. According to the prosecution, this was the scene of the gruesome murder. 
It claims that Bravo strangled Aguilar inside his car after knocking him out using Gatorade laced with drugs. Christian Aguilar struggles for his life. He reaches for the door. He scratches the ceiling. This is an enemy burial. This is indifference to life. And for the CSI types in the jury box, prosecutors have a cornucopia of forensic evidence. The most damning evidence against Pedro is the blood that was found inside his SUV. Blood in Pedro's car and on a pair of insoles. Christian's backpack containing his wallet was balled up inside Bravo's closet. And the residue in his car matched soil samples from the site of Christian's shallow grave. And then a piece of irrefutable evidence, the tear pattern from the roll of duct tape Pedro bought at that Walmart. They literally were able to match the tears of the duct tape found on the victim's body with tears on duct tape on Pedro Bravo's own car. It is a chilling chain of evidence, but the defense argues that all of it, from the shovel and the computer searches to the poison pesticide and sleeping pills, was intended not for homicide, but for suicide. He's out there in the woods, he's drinking this concoction, threw up all over himself, and he's like, well, maybe, maybe this is a sign from God that I shouldn't do this. Pedro still needed the jury to believe that his statement to police was true. He beat Christian up, but left him alive. And now he's going to have to sell that story himself. Coming up, Pedro takes the stand. We swear or affirm any testimony you give this jury today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's right. The jailhouse snitch and the plot to use that shovel to put more victims in the ground. 